consumer culture promises us that we can buy our way out of pain. That the reason we're sad and angry is not that being human hurts, it's because we don't have those countertops, her thighs, those jeans. This is a clever way to run an economy, but this is no way to run a life. Consuming keeps us distracted, busy, and numb. Numbness keeps us from becoming. Welcome to I Get It, the podcast for the modern woman who doesn't want to live mediocre. We're balancing babies on our hips, typing out that important email, and flipping pancakes at the same time. Not to mention, keeping things steamy with our husbands right before we put our face mask on for the night. It's not easy, and you are not alone. I'm your host, Tara Wages, and I get it. Welcome to today's episode of I Get It. I am your host, Tara Wages, and this right here is Wesley Quinton, who just has spoiled me tremendously in the last 24 hours and just goes above and beyond to make sure that I am taken care of and our kids and just, It's yeah. only because you take care of me and my kids. Yeah, Wes's trip this time was going to be 15 days, and he decided, like, I'm going to fly you out for the weekend. I can't come. It, it was just too hard for him to come home with the other things he needed to do. Yeah, that was a that was a hard part for me. I was feeling really selfish because I only had a few days off between having to be in another job. And they're not really off. You had to drive nine hours. You yeah. had to do several other things. And so going home and being home for 48 hours is just tough, I think, honestly, for you. <laughs> Yeah. And for me. So instead, I said, hey, let me just fly you up and we'll hang out for a little bit. Yep. I was going to come up today and he got impatient. Always. Blew me up yesterday. So we spent the night watching 90s rom-com, eating good room service, room service in our beds. It's been a great evening. Well, you said beds, but really just one bed. <laughs> yeah. In so, the bed. Yeah. We don't sleep separately yet. Yeah. And we're always really nervous to come to a hotel room and have to take any photos or anything because we have the tripod set up now. <laughs> so when you're walking through a hotel lobby with like a tripod and a camera, you automatically just think one thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so. It's not recording a podcast. <laughs> but that's exactly what we're doing. Yep. Um, Let's get into it. What are we talking about today, today baby? Today, we are talking about pain. And it's really a great topic for us to talk about after last week. Yeah. So last week's episode, we were talking about our kids and their emotions and helping teach them how to regulate those emotions and walk through it. And it's so important to me to do that because... Our generation, so many of us, we were taught as young kids that, hey, you're okay, just get up, D dust it off, you're fine. Yeah. Don't cry. Don't be in pain. Don't show that emotion. Don't yeah. be angry. Hold it together. And so we were really just focusing on happy as the goal. Mm -hmm. Be happy. Smile. If we feel sad, there there's something wrong with us, and we feel broken in that moment. And so we always just find ourselves struggling there. And, and I understand like as a parent, I want my kids to feel happy. Like I want them to feel that, but we did not learn how to cope with pain. We did not learn how to cope with anger, which is why suicide rates are so high, yeah. which is why alcohol and drug abuse and pain medication and pornography all of these things are so high because we are just using them to cope and to mask what is going on inside our body. Yeah. And whether we realize it or not, we spend much of our time just trying to not embrace the feelings that we're having. Yeah. You know, um, sadness sucks. So I'm going to go eat some chocolate. Angry is frustrating. So I'm going to buy a new purse. <laughs> Fear is debilitating, so I'm going to pour another glass of wine just to take the edge off. You know, how many times we hear, like, I'm just going to take the edge off. Yeah. You know, like, we can't actually feel what we're feeling. Yeah, those are all women things, right? Well, yeah, Eat but I mean, we purse, all know who's right? watching this yeah. thing. Hey, to the, to the men who do sit there with their wives, I applaud you. Cheers to you. Yeah. But I know who's on the other side of this right. most of the time. And yeah. Chocolate purse last week I, when I was feeling that before I cried, I bought a new hair waiver, um, some fingernail things that I've wanted for a long time. And I'm doing that. So I'm not just pouring bourbon every <laughs> night. And so, yeah, we're just trying to cover up and cope with 
not feeling what we're feeling. Yeah. Because yeah. what we're feeling is wrong. And it's been really interesting to discover it and talk through. We've, we've talked a lot about Dr. Glenn Hill on this podcast. We love him so much. And a huge part of what he teaches is the core emotions and working through each of those emotions every day as they are happening. Yeah. So you realize that your emotions are actually changing more quickly. And so even though you may think I'm angry all the time, you're actually not angry all the time. You're able to recognize that whatever you're in in this moment won't last forever, Yep. you know? And so it's been really cool because he says that emotions aren't good or bad. You know, so when you go through them, it's shame, anger, guilt, fear, hurt, joy, Mm -hmm. you know? Good job. And all of those sound really bad except for joy. And he says, well, somebody that's having an affair, you know, that's sleeping with someone else, they're experiencing joy, but that's not necessarily a good thing. Right. You know? So he says, emotions are just emotions. They are not good or bad. They are just what you feel. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is so freeing. That's such a freeing thought that this fear that I feel isn't a bad emotion. If you haven't listened to episode one, highly recommend, go do it. We talk about fear. Fear keeps us safe. You know, Um, angry is not a bad emotion. It may show us I need to set boundaries so we can allow our feelings instead of labeling them good or bad to instead teach us the lessons that they're trying to teach us. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when we're not able to do that, instead, we're just numbing. And when we are numb, we can't, as Glennon Doyle says, we can't become. If we are numb to the world, that means we're not experiencing what is happening around us. Mm. We know, and we have experienced for ourselves that feeling of either being numb or wanting to be numb. We have people that are close to us that have become addicted to either drugs or pain medication that they can't show up to events without numbing themselves before they get there. And their lives are cut short, not because I think they're going to die soon cut short, but because they are not, they're not feeling anything. So if you can't feel the anger, the hurt, then you also can't feel the love, the joy, the happy. So when you are numb, you're not experiencing anything at all. Yeah. And a tough place to be in. It is a tough place to be in. And so numbness, it doesn't create a full life. And it is walking through that pain and getting to the other side of it that then creates the full life. Mm-hmm. I've been reading Tamed by Glenn and Doyle, and it's absolutely incredible. I highly recommend it. And I'm going to read for the first time on the podcast. Um, an excerpt. Is that the way to say it? Yes. Excerpt. (laughs) I couldn't say specific last night. I got it down. Um, Good job. Yeah, it was a real struggle. So I'm going to read this very quickly because she just hits the nail on the head when it comes to this. I'm here to keep becoming truer, more beautiful versions of myself again and again forever. To be alive is to be in a perpetual state of revolution. Whether I like it or not, pain is the fuel of revolution. Dude, yes. That like actually makes me emotional. Mm. Consumer culture promises us that we can buy our way out of pain. That the reason we're sad and angry is not that being human hurts. It's because we don't have those countertops, her thighs, those jeans. This is a clever way to run an economy, but this is no way to run a life. Consuming keeps us distracted, busy, and numb. Numbness keeps us from becoming. This is why every great spiritual teacher tells us the same story about humanity and pain. Don't avoid it. You need it to evolve, to become, and you are here to become. Like Buddha, who had to leave his life of comfort to experience all kinds of human suffering before finding enlightenment. Like Moses, who wandered 40 years in the desert before seeing the promised land. Like Wesley of the Princess Bride who said, Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. Like Jesus, who walked straight towards his own crucifixion. That makes me so emotional. Mm -hmm. First the pain, then the waiting, then the rising. That to me is just, ha. 
so life changing. So you're, so you're saying we should lean into the pain? That we should not numb ourselves to that pain. Because what is on the other side of that pain is the beauty. Yeah. So yeah, you're saying we should not cover up our, our pain and not say, hey, I am experiencing pain and that is okay. Um, versus, you know, I'm experiencing pain. I'm going to cover it up with pornography. I'm going to cover it up with buying things. I'm going to cover it up with food. All of the above. Yes. Yeah. And so I actually didn't plan. I can really see this happening right now in our black community mm-hmm. in America. Um, in the 60s, they create, they had the civil acts, the civil uh, rights movement. Thank you. Words are hard. The civil rights movement. And they uncovered everything. They created a lot of change. It was very difficult and very hard. And then for us growing up, we haven't seen anything about what's happening in our black community. We've lived our lives thinking everyone is equal. We're colorblind. Everything is fine. And they have been taught, hold it together, hold it together. This is how it's supposed to be. And it's not until this year with the death of George Floyd that now they are stepping into that pain, those microaggressions that they've heard their entire life, these, um, Problems of getting employment, people mistreating them everywhere they go. They are stepping into that pain because on the other side of it is the revolution, is the change that they want to see for their community in our world. And they cannot get there if they continue or if they had been continuing to just act like everything is okay. Mm -hmm. You know, which is what the last 30 years since the civil rights movement has been. Yeah. Okay, we made a little bit of ground. Now we just have to act like it's okay. Yeah. You know, when they've known deep down it's not okay. You know? Yep. And so we are now watching this revolution take place because they are living out their pain. Yep. They are walking through it and it is hard and it is messy for all of us. But on the other side of it, laws are being changed. Yeah. It's slow, but reform is going to happen yep. because of it. Yep. Conversations are hard. And I think when you bring that to a marriage, it's like, okay, obviously one of you makes a mistake. One of you disappoints the other one. Yep. We can mask that and pretend and go into denial and pretend that it never happened. Right. Yep. Or we can lean into that pain as hard as it possibly is. Have the conversation with your spouse. Yep. Experience some hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. But on the other side of that. Absolutely. You know, is a, Beautiful. Trusting marriage that you're open and honest. Absolutely. And that doesn't change overnight. Yeah. You know, and and we've experienced that. And in that moment for us that you had, we had that conversation and um, it took years of truly rebuilding the trust. And, and I can remember sitting with my counselor and sitting with my best friends and thinking like, I can't continue in this marriage. Yeah. You know, it's too hard. The pain is too deep. I can never trust him again. And now to see where we were at, because we walked through that pain together with the help of a counselor, our marriage is better than it's ever been Mm -hmm. a thousand times over. And it's interesting because I'm even saying that in this season where you've been gone all the time, um, we have not been connecting and life has been very lonely for me. Mm -hmm. And I I posted this recently on Instagram, but you know, my mom calls, she's like, well, is today better? Because we've had some fights, you know, is, is today better? How are y'all today? And I'm able to confidently say, ultimately good. We are ultimately good because I know the security we have in each other because we walked through that experience together. Yeah. And so that is what I see happening right now for human beings and for our country as a whole. And I think what's difficult about it is a lot of times we experience these things on our own. They're very individualized cases. Like when we were going through our messy, it was really from 2014 to 2018, you know, the rest of the world was functioning as normal, Yeah. you know? And so other people, the loss of a parent, you lose it. But in 2020, it's hitting the fan for everybody at the same time. No one, no one is safe from it. Just this week, we've, we've talked to two men or no two men that have lost parents very close to them. 
Um, we've seen celebrities lose their bait. Like we are seeing people not just suffer from the emotional pain of the election and COVID and, and these other things, but the normal personal pain that we experience too. It is just extremely rampant. So I really believe that what can come of it, we just have to get to the other side of it. Yeah. It's the beauty. Yep. And um, so I I know that no one in our country is safe from this right now. Our black community has felt pain for a long time. And that wound has been cut wide open this year. Small business owners have lost their jobs and their livelihood. We are, we're in Green Bay right now. And the town is empty. I, I went to a small business today. She was the only store open on the whole block. All the other ones had clothes signs. And there was no one else there. Yeah. You know, um, there are... There are businesses that are hurting. Um, women who have had to give up their career to school their children. Elderly who haven't had a hug mm. from a loved one in a long, long time. Men who are working overtime under stressed environments because half of their crew has been cut and now their livelihood depends on it. Rural Americans who have worked their whole lives but feel like they can never get ahead. This election just blows up all of that bitterness that they have. Yeah. Family members who have lost loved ones to a virus that has swept our nation. No one is safe from pain right now. People are in pain and they may be coping in their own ways. Yep. Pornography, you know, all these things that we've named. But we as a nation have chosen to cope with this pain by pointing our fingers at each other. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If you haven't listened to the bitterness episode, that's a few episodes back that we are coping with it by saying, I'm hurting and it's your fault. Mm -hmm. It's because you didn't wear your mask. It's because you are voting for this person. It's because you didn't save enough money for your business. Now I have to lose my job. And we are just hating on each other. We watched the debate and our entire country sat there horrified watching these two leaders, these two men that are supposed to speak the truth and speak the wisdom into our country and represent who we are, just fight back and forth. And we don't realize that it's a reflection. That yeah. is exactly, they, those voices, what they were saying to each other, that's, I get on Facebook. I see those same words back and forth, back and forth. And even after that happened. I get on, people are like, that was the worst moderator I've ever seen. Da, 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 da. You know, like just already throwing stones again. We are so quick to throw a stone at each other. And what those stones do, they cause pain, mm -hmm. you know? So we are just now, we are hurt people throwing a stone at another hurt person. And that cycle is just going to continue. Yeah. It's just going to continue and we will never make it to the other side. And so as much as I wish that a leader would step in and share this with the world, you know, and say, stop fighting with each other. I, I can't do that. All that I know that I can do is take responsibility for myself Yeah, and how I'm going to treat people. And, you know, I, Carlos Whitaker, who's my favorite Instagrammer right now. What's his Instagram? Um, Los Wit, mm -hmm. L-O-S-W-H-I-T. He speaks such truth. Um, he was saying that being one kind act is a butterfly effect. If you show one act of kindness to someone, that can change their entire day, which they could change their entire week, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just ripples and ripples and ripples. And so I am choosing in this moment to find those moments, yeah. you know, and to try to create those butterfly effects and take responsibility for my own actions and my own circle and how I use my voice and how I use my body. Yep. And so these are specifically the things that I'm going to be doing in this season. And at first I was thinking, oh, well, I need to say, do this until November 4th, you know, the election day. But in reality, right after the election, we go straight into the holidays. Yeah. 
And the holidays represent pain for so many people. It is one of the highest times of the year around Christmas is for suicide. Mm. And people need to feel love. They need to feel seen and they need to feel heard in that season more than ever. And so I am going to do some things to work on my own self Yep. when I'm in pain because I need to cope with that pain and not mask it. And that is naming my emotions as they're happening. You know, we go through, we have our emotion wheel and we talk about what we felt throughout the day to remind myself that these feelings won't last forever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel and cry. Now here's the, here is the chain, the, I guess, side note about this. I'm going to feel and cry because it helps me get it out of my body. And I think it's so important to get it out of my body. Um, but not crying to take away from someone else's pain. So I, this is an issue that's been a long issue in our society. If someone comes to person A comes to person B and person A is in pain. Person B starts crying to the point person A is not even seen anymore. You know, yeah. it is one thing for me to sit in my room and cry about the world and get those emotions out of my body. It's another thing for me to make your pain about me. Yeah. And so to be very careful about that. I'm going to use the Calm app. That junk has changed my life. <laughs> I literally listen to it every single night you're out of town. And there was one night I was like, I'm just not going to do it tonight. And I, my brain would not stop. It wouldn't. So then I just tried to listen to the music, still wouldn't stop. So I started the gratitude practice and they talk you through different things and breathing. So I'm listening to them talk and my brain is quiet. It mm -hmm. shuts up because someone else is speaking and I'm able to rest. So rest is huge. It is important. And yes, calm app for the win. Yeah. We are going to go on regular date nights and getaways. We are having this getaway this weekend because we need to connect. We need to connect with each other very badly so we can handle a few months of living the way we have, but this is not our lives, you right. know, and we both were starting to feel disconnected from each other. I've learned to cope with life without you and I don't want to do that. Yep. And so connecting with the people that we love, that bring us joy and that lift us up. I'm going to use my voice to educate, not condemn. This is huge, huge difference. Condemning is the, you're wrong, you're dumb. I will never talk to you. Like all of these things, putting it on someone else versus education saying, I believe, you know, I'm supporting this person because of this. Yeah. Or have you thought about this? Or have you thought about this? Or how do you feel about mm -hmm. this? Or what if you were in this type of position? That is very different than saying, this is the worst moderator we've ever had and he needs to go. Away. You know, yeah. like it's not the moderator's fault. I'll just say before you educate, you have to listen before that. It's, that is the other thing. Yes. I am going to listen. Yeah. I, it is so important right now. And that is one of the best things that we can do for each other because you may be that person that's just that listening ear for a friend who's in pain. So when I say I'm going to feel and I'm going to cry in my room and to you, you may be that person that that person is needing to do that with, Yeah, absolutely. you know, to be yep. on the other side and listening to them. Yep. Um, and yeah, when you're sharing ideas and, your stance is on things listening because that is how we learn. And I have family members that we, it is very interesting because we're on two different ends. We're on two different sides of the spectrum, but we ironically believe a lot of the same things, you know, and I wouldn't know that if I didn't listen to them yeah. and, and why they believe certain things. And so that unites us, even though we're going to turn our ballots in and they're going to look very differently, Yep, you know? Um, I'm checking in with my people and supporting my people around me. I feel like in these seasons, we spread ourselves too thin. We try to be all people to all things. And if you don't need to sign up for the cookies for Thanksgiving for your kids class, don't sign up for it. Don't spread yourself too thin. You know your boundaries. Create those boundaries if you haven't. 
and show up for the people and the things that actually matter to you. Yeah. And then recognize what your personal coping mechanisms are. So you can get that accountability so you don't fall into that trap. I found myself like at the end of the day being like, oh, it was such a long day. I need a glass of bourbon, you know, and having it regularly and and not having multiple. I wasn't getting drunk, but that doesn't matter. I was using it as a crutch for my end of the bad day. And so I recognize that if I don't take control of that now, it very easily could get out of hand. So for me, I'm creating that boundary. If if I find myself saying that on my long days, no, I can't have a glass of bourbon. You know, Um, I'm going to have a drink when I'm like, hey, you know what? An old fashioned sounds good, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And just knowing that about myself and for someone that struggles with pornography, ask your accountability partner, check in multiple times a week. Uh, up that whatever you are doing right now for your boundaries increase them a little bit because it's only going to get harder yeah between now and january 1st um so know what your vices are create budgets for yourself if you are spending too much you need to give that debit card to your husband and use cash for a bit so you have that boundary or just put that credit card in the freezer well well she have you heard about that it. no you put it in the freezer and water so that it's like in an ice. So you really have to think about it before oh. you get out. <laughs> that's, yeah, what, that's, that's a Dave Ramsey thing. I've never heard that. And that is and that awesome hilarious. Like, you have to really think about it before you get it out. The yeah. Yeah. That is, that's a good point. So yeah, if spending money is your vice, which I'm also recognizing this as myself as well, to create those budgets. Because the goal is obviously for all of humans to make out of this healthy. But for us, for I thought you me, just said it. The goal is for all humans to make out. To to make it out of this. (laughs) But for me and my husband to stay a team and Mm. as partners during it, you know, that is my personal goal. And if I'm breaking trust with him, then we won't do that. Yeah. You know, and if we don't make it out as partners, that's only going to increase my pain. Yep. And so creating those boundaries for myself and then also realizing we've talked about this several times recently, what helps you cope with things for me, writing, So writing things out, getting things out of my head, figuring out what that is for you and just applying it. Yep. And so I truly believe in this season that we as individuals have the opportunity to create something extraordinary. I really do. And I don't know how long this is going to last. You know, COVID hit and we all thought, oh, this is just going to be the first thing. And then the the hornets came and then the um, George Floyd happened and then another disease. Like it it's just been nonstop. And I, I can't predict, you know, is this, is this pain going to last a couple of years? But I do believe that if we will show love to each other and support, despite our differences, we will make it out unified. And as a society that lifts each other up, sharing our resources with each other and offering help to those that need help. We have more than enough. Every person listening to this episode, you have more than enough, more than enough love, more than enough time, more than enough everything to help your neighbor and showing them that smile, that have a good day, whatever that is that Mm -hmm. they need. And um, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy or fast, But it's ultimately our choice to either amplify the pain in someone else by throwing that stone or walking in love and supporting those people. Yeah. And I'm going to try my best to not throw any stones, even when it's really, really tempting. Yeah. Because it's tempting. So stones down, arms Arms open. open. (laughs) Don't give each other hugs. Sanitize arms. Hug your... Your circle. Use your words. We all have circles that we can hug. Thank you all so much for being here. I genuinely appreciate it. Um, Just your support and showing up. And I truly hope that every week you come and you get something that just helps you to feel seen and understood and something to share with the world. And so if you feel that in this episode and you're like, yes, yes, this is what we need right now, share it please get on your Instagram, on your Facebook, 
and share this link with your friends, with your family. Um, if you have that person, you know, that you can just keep seeing them throw the stones, like share it with them. Yeah. Um, and I am just super, super grateful. And I know that life is a little crazy and there are days that you feel a little crazy, especially when our hearts feel so damn heavy that the only cure seems like a glass of bourbon. Mm. You are not alone. I get it. Be happy and love each other. Peace. Peace.